Welcome back, Mac and Moves on MT4 here today on the 26th of uh, April. And uh, holy moly, we can observe that uh, stock market momentum is seemingly slightly limited. And guys, before I continue, please give me a heads up. I'm not sure if the audio connection is working all right here. Um, it looks a bit distorted, but uh, please give me a feedback if things are working out. And, uh, and I'd like to continue here. Stock markets are in a way a kind of uh, heading slightly to the downside and uh, the US dollar is showing some mixed feelings. Gerhard, Moin Frankie, okay, that seemingly works right now, uh, I assume. So what's going on? We can observe and should check and start with the uh, general view in markets. The euro dollar had uh, lost some momentum all the way towards a critical support zone and this is going to be now turning in towards uh, some interesting levels i would say we should play and i would play a couple of those trades here right now in particular below the recent low area 109.65 is the key level 109.65 we could put our stop loss basically on the other side might be do, able to do this one at 1045 i think that makes sense the most that uh, take profit we leave open should the market break higher of course we would get into our long position should the market break lower we would get into our short position i think it perfectly makes sense here uh, leading us and giving a market participants potentially some competitive advantage a breakout into either direction is at least what I would expect to happen here uh, quite strongly. Similarly, from what we can observe uh, in the pound as well. However, the pound has been fallen back into neutral territory if we concern uh, or if we compare this recent trading box. Makes perfect sense here uh, for me. With the Australian dollar, basically, market momentum heading lower is kind of the tricky situation where i would say this australian dollar looking to be quite interesting here where we would say okay the aussie the pin bar candles here wicks to the upside are something which i quite like to observe here in markets and with that obviously we could we could see that downside momentum might continue now last but not least also the new zealand dollar is kind of interesting and two things i've already added a little sell opportunity but i'm later going to put uh, the sell stop order in markets as well you guys uh, who have been uh, following me here quite a while know that these are my bread and butter trades that doesn't mean they always work obviously not win chance 60 65 percent roughly so a real strong rewards to risk ratio is key, but sell stop below the low, in this case uh, would make sense perfectly, 61.25, stop loss up here, 61.66, quite a small stop loss, just 40 something, for, uh, 40 pips more or less, uh, which if the market falls uh, dramatically could uh, give us some sort of a feedback here towards uh, the lower levels and uh, could offer a downside momentum to continue in the New Zealand dollar as it's looking quite sweet here with this market at the moment. What else do we have? Kind of a few things in terms of stock markets. The thing is everything is pretty much aligned. Now we can see a slight positivity in risk in terms of the euro reaching higher points, the pound reaching higher points comparing the close of yesterday. However, if we're looking at the Aussie and the New Zealand dollar, they are a preview of a risk off sentiment and this risk off sentiment obviously a kind of on the S&P 500 is the key takeaway the market rolling over from this high points here all the way to the bottom potentially offering some sort of further weakness and this further weakness could leave market momentum in limbo at the moment banking turmoil is coming back in a way first republic is trying to explore to send or to sell not to send to sell to sell about 50 to 100 billion of us dollars in assets so obviously the issues come from a certain mismatch between assets and their liabilities that's a definitely tricky situation we can observe here 
And in this case, uh, obviously, this might add towards further pressure in the banking sector. The market momentum at the moment, obviously, it seems to be quite uh, on the weaker side of things here. And with that, obviously, the downside pressure might, uh, might be the case, downside pressure uh, instead of market support here is at least uh, coming in from still the banking sector. When we're looking at positive signs, obviously we can uh, name uh, uh, Google, Microsoft among the big techies which uh, qu whose quarterly earnings have actually really gotten a huge boost. Uh, let me open the article here at Bloomy. So quite a strong quite a strong story here. OpenAI, uh, obviously, kind of, uh, and their Bing search engine from Microsoft is something interesting. Obviously, they are, uh, uh, they are moving on as much as I understand here from uh, browsing through the web, the different, uh, the different ways of, uh, different ways of uh, um, basically uh, enabling search, whereas uh, um, Sundai Pichai is stating that Google will adopt uh, something different. So obviously, kind of rather as a market leader, approaching a different way so we can get a further a push towards a market momentum to higher levels and uh, obviously kind of being one of the biggest guys having started real search engines uh, google might get uh, some sort of further market motivation though uh, actually um and the uh, the current situation and that's the interesting part uh, is more in favor of microsoft which i would be as a kind of rather free thinker not get I would have guessed that uh, rather Google gets a bit of a positive, rather positive support here. Though with shares uh, rushing higher, 10% roughly, for Microsoft uh, Alphabet, uh, and of the stand that is still somehow as well moving towards higher levels. So that's going to be the interesting market motivation, though they make up quite a bit for the S&P 500. The question is going to be whether these guys uh, are indeed uh, supportive for uh, the entire market being uplifted i'd say rather not and i'd say we might be in for another round of weaker pricing momentum since the markets are about to potentially at least here roll to the downside that's at least when the big tech no sorry the big guys at wall street might have their competitive advantage being loaded with uh, in a particular high amounts of uh, short options yeah, to ensure against uh, falling market prices. Um, the Nasdaq is doing something similar, however, kind of uh, getting a bit of a supportive uh, trade momentum going. The German DAX, something similarly as well. This looks to me like the beginning of some selling opportunity, I would say again as well, uh, here below the low, 15,800 is uh, the key level, which is what I would uh, use maybe to enter into any fresh position. Sometimes it makes actually sense to wait and see how the market starts into uh, the uh, trading day. And uh, hence, I would say uh, the supportive line broken market rolling over, telling me that uh, further weakness could be on the cards here in this uh, case. And that's exactly how the DAX uh, is likely are going to move further. Speaking of the Japanese yen, we are kind of at interesting levels. The JP stronger, slightly stronger against the US dollar, against the pound as well, which had weakened. It's mainly just uh, the euro and the pound weakness in those two pairs. And then obviously the dollar strength uh, doesn't have much of an impact. Our trade in the euro Japanese yen got uh, stopped out. That's not a biggie here for us. Uh, we increased stop loss. I think we did everything pretty much perfectly fine. I recall no I think we didn't uh, we didn't uh, take uh, didn't take some profit off the table here but we increased our stop loss and just by that or just by doing that uh, we at least secured our trade and uh, were able to at least uh, safe house some uh, pips here and now I spoke with one of I think Andreas it was Andreas and me we messaged yesterday and we were like oh Andreas was saying Frank why don't you think the market could roll over again and yeah there are some arguments and in particular right now I would agree with Andreas uh, meaning uh, Andreas that idea short so I would agree with his idea here that the market is giving us some sort of technical bearish candle here push higher the push lower and then sideways slightly higher now the market uh, back to the downside uh, in this case potentially again same story might work out here andreas if you're watching which you are at the moment uh, here uh, that could be the line in the sand to enter this market uh, weakness and now 
downside momentum could be seen towards lower levels and might kind of be one of the cases where the market let me remove the zone disturbing here just found a resistance found a double top in back and uh, back here in regards to this area my idea was uh, that uh, in the resistance area here was uh, it's a top it's a secondary tested resistance zone and now we might have tested it a little bit but then we're close by in jumping beyond because we already had a sell-off and a retracement of this level to the support area i know i would have expected that the market kind of blasts through this zone in the near future could be the case still the market might still continue to correct a little bit only to then blast higher but this might also be a bit of a chance here if at least the market goes say as a correction towards 144.60 well we then would have two some sort of pips actually look so so little but we would have 190 180 pips maybe to capture as well so there are some chances that the downside momentum might make sense and um, downside momentum in regards to the euro against the japanese yen we could face and see some sort of a pressure to lower levels and then confirmation we get from similar uh, trading pairs currency pairs here a bit of a resistance zone as well here you can see all the wicks and i'm not counting where the wick is ending or starting right so some say this should be the perfect level yes it should be but uh, maybe if the market kind of re uh, spikes through this zone here like it is uh, we could also argue that any sort of level here within this range makes sense which is why sometimes when we have these big wicks I like to take a, a zone into consideration where I say if the market pushes back into a zone this is kind of a, enough justification for me here to see markets rolling back to lower areas so that's on the pound and against the Japanese yen and guys that's more or less it from my side little few technical things here let's have a look on the dollar index this is not really doing anything much to be honest it look actually kind of a, a bit stronger here the wrong click here it looked a bit stronger here early in the morning but it's not really giving us anything major however i still believe that maybe it's just to do that we have not too much confirmation from all us dollar currency pairs we got the euro the us dollar we got the pound us dollar heading somehow again slightly higher and the euro dollar actually makes up quite a lot 60 something percent if i'm not wrong i always forget these figures uh, of uh, the uh, um, dollar index are made up by the euro uh, us dollar currency pair japanese yen a little bit the pound some if i'm not wrong a little bit among canadian dollar and other currencies uh, but uh, definitely since the euro has kind of uh, rather a bigger say we could uh, definitely see as well that uh, the market in this case uh, it could offer us uh, some sort of uh, a further a negative price momentum for the dollar index since the euro is rising somehow and the Australian dollar is just a weaken. Anyways, I'll focus on the Aussie. That's my key takeaway. I focus on a sell stop in the New Zealand dollar, which looks good. I focus on a sell stop in the euro dollar and a buy stop in the euro dollar. Newswise, I think we have mostly um, all of these uh, of these information here uh, on hand. Carrier Global, U.S. maker of air conditioners, uh, a kind of uh, interesting uh, story here uh, personally because a good friend of mine uh, uh, here, Hans, uh, he knows uh, the Fiesmann family, saying that back in the days it was great with uh, working with them. German family-owned uh, company, and now obviously since being German, I was like. Uh, family businesses any sort of businesses in particular when they turn to be successful and have been successful over many years and uh, uh, maybe another at least one or two generations already a uh, fiesman known in germany for heating system um and uh, uh, the company is going to uh, likely offload 12 billion euro uh, in their heating and cooling operations. So that's uh, going uh, to be kind of interesting. The US firm is paying 80% of the purchase in cash and 20% in stock for Wiesmann's climate solutions unit. Interesting story which came out just uh, recently. Tesla price cuts another round, uh, huh, half a dozen times as uh, the Bloomy reports. Not sure if that's really something good. It really means that the market is saturated seemingly and people are not willing to buy any sort of uh, cars like this uh, for the amount of uh, prices given to me tesla has never been really a sexy car anyways i'm just uh, more of a supporter of other cars it doesn't really matter much uh, 
Audi e-tron, for example, doesn't really matter much anyways what I think, but generally of course the story is interesting how we can observe this moving on further. Guys, what's on? We see stocks lower, that's my take at least uh, for what I would assume. New Zealand lower, Aussie lower, uh, Euro dollar might break to the upside or also to the downside. There's uh, interesting, uh, interesting setups, uh, Euro Japanese yen, we're out of that. We have a couple of trades on which might turn interesting uh, later on. So stay tuned. Talk to you later. Happy trading, guys, and uh, see you then. Bye-bye.